knowing what you know and and knowing you know you and then also knowing colleagues of mine at the NFL Network who have played, there are things that you can't say on the air that you know. So knowing what you know on everything, having mm -hmm. been a teammate and played and all of that business, would you acquire Antonio Brown right now? Would you take him on your team? If In the you're... right situation, I would. Then what's that? In the right situation with the, with the, with the right head coach, uh, with somebody who understands fully what you're getting. Right, it's that there's the the conversation that Mr. Rooney and Antonio Brown had is a conversation that needs to be had before you ever acquire him. When you're speaking about your quarterback, what are your plans on offense? How will you coach him? How will he be treated? And I think the hard part about that is what team wants to go through all that that thinks Antonio Brown is worth it. And I believe that that's going to be difficult. You look at a team like the San Francisco 49ers, who I know have been rumored to be one of the teams that Tony O'Brien would like to play with. Can Coach Shanahan keep him under wraps? Is Jimmy Garoppolo at quarterback enough for him to feel like he has an opportunity to excel in a game that he doesn't get four to five catches or five or more targets? How do you treat him? How do you deal with him? And so when you look at a situation like that, it seems really hard, plus all the things we talked about already, Rich, it seems really hard that there's a perfect spot for Antonio Brown. See, what my, my follow-up to that, and again, this is the last one, Ryan, for you, is that – but, but, No, 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 but wouldn't Mike Tomlin know who Antonio Brown was, what you're getting into? You say, like, he's got to be a coach that knows what you're getting with him. Mike Tomlin won a Super Bowl. I mean, Mike Tomlin – it didn't just fall off the turnip truck, right? I mean, you know, as you referred no. to him as Coach T. So if he can't figure it out, how could somebody else? Well, was, you know what? Do better. I would say. I would say. I would say it was one of those things that you feel like if you give people independence, if you allow guys to be their own personality, if you allow guys to be adults who are good player who, players who are who are who are very who are very into their craft, you feel like they give you the love back. I've let you be free. I've let you, I've let you grow into who you are. So you feel like they'll have some accountability to you. You feel like they will look out for you in some way. And that's not what's happened with Antonio. Antonio has grown to a point to where it's more about him than, than it is team. And I think that was something for me I always saw. Right, like that was a part of him. I always saw, but when you draft a guy in the sixth round, when you know the hardships he's dealt with throughout life, you know the way that the ways that he had had to take care of himself, you think that those things will show in loyalty. And just in Antonio Brown, it didn't. It was a miscalculation by Coach T, and I think even more so, it was a miss in correction once those things started to go sideways, which now has us at this point. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.